For today's movie, we go all the way back to 1953, where a small town doctor in England tells us what he claims will be a fascinating story revolving around a burnt down barn. There's nothing much to show you in Hardeen, nothing that will bring tourists to Gate, nothing except perhaps that old burnt out barn. Yet it all began here as it ended. Along with the doctor, our main characters, who start the movie as children, are Bill, Robin, and the target of their boyhood affection, Lena. Sir Bill, thou hast a hat. For it well, for thou the oak leaves. Off he went, the defeated knight. We learn that Robin has a rich father with government connections, while Bill has an alcoholic father that kicked him out of the house, and Bill was mostly raised by the doctor. As they grew up, Bill and Robin became friends and became inventors together, while Lena moved to America and, after failing at multiple careers, has moved back home to spend what little money she has left before killing herself. I came back to sell the things that Mother left behind, and it'll give me enough to live on for three, perhaps even four months. And after that... I shall die in some reasonably unmessy fashion. I won't have you talk like that. Okay, this part's kind of tough, and I didn't know where to put it in the review, but I'm just going to put it right here. This actress is Barbara Payton, and in a eerie coincidence to this character, she had moved from a small town to Hollywood to become an actress. After failing, this being one of her last films, she became an alcoholic, turned to prostitution, and after years of beatings knocked all of her teeth out, she moved back home just in time to drink herself to death, as this character had intended to do. The doctor, being the narrator of this story, gets to make himself the hero by telling us not only does he get Lena a job working for Bill and Robin, but after their funding was cut off by Robin's dad, he sells his medical practice so that they can keep working on their experiment, even though he has no idea what it is, how close they are, or whether he's flushing his career down the toilet. All he knows is that they make vague references to Einstein once in a while. It turns out that their invention is a duplicator machine. They can copy anything using the energy in the air. And they start off with the doctor's watch as a proof of concept. It's an exact replica. Even to this bent link. Look at that. How on earth did you do it? We found ways of making matter out of energy, sort of reversing the process. It was first done some years ago by the GE labs in New York. Their machine, the Betatron, used high-powered X-rays and produced brand new electrons, freshly created particles of matter. You've lost me somewhere on the bay, but never mind, Bill. Oh, just let's forget all the scientific jargon. You must take it on trust, Doc. We can reproduce anything in the world. Their main plan behind this duplicator machine is not to duplicate watches or gold or to make money. They want to make medicine for the sick, food for the poor, works of art, so that the entire world can appreciate the Venus de Milo or the Mona Lisa. And they sign a government contract to get money for bigger machines so that they can do just that. But Bill has become bored now. The invention part was the fun part. Sitting there and duplicating food or medicine just isn't fun. I'm tired of the whole reproducer, Rob. It was fun developing it, but now I'd rather start on something new. 
I didn't know you felt like this, Lou. Just think, in a few months, the hospitals of the world will have all the radium they need. No polio victim need die now for the want of an iron lung. And all the beauty we can give to the people who never before have owned a great painting or a beautiful statue. Adding to Bill's problems of not having excitement anymore, the love of his life, Lena, is marrying Robin. Lena and I are going to be married. And this is where shit starts to get crazy, boys and girls. So, so far they've only been able to duplicate dead things. Gold, paintings, medicine. Oh yeah, he's going to do live experiments. There's a part where he tells the doctor kind of what he's thinking of. And the doctor does a narration, I knew what he would do next. And I'm like, oh my god, he's going to kidnap Lena. But no, he just straight out asks her. It's like, hey, did I ever have a chance or was I done losing that sword fight as a six-year-old? And she's like, no, if you had asked me to marry you, I would have been married to you instead. So he duplicates her, wedding ring and all, and renames her Helen. A chill came over me. It was as if they'd suddenly become ghosts, intangible and lost in the shadows. I pitied Bill and I trembled for Lena. Yet there was nothing I could do. Remember how they said it's an exact duplicate? Well, it turns out exactly duplicating someone that's in love with somebody else, they're still going to be in love with that somebody else. And having them look at a wedding ring that another man put on their finger isn't going to work out well, and Helen tries to kill her fucking self again. Now that Bill is stuck with the problem of two hot blondes that don't want to fuck him, he electrocutes the shit out of Helen with Lena's help to erase her memory and I guess turn her into the most realistic real doll ever, burning down the fucking barn in the process. So that is four-sided triangle. Overall, a little bit of sci-fi little bit of horror stuff in there. Uh, the relationship stuff might have been leaned down a little too heavy. And they could have made the sci-fi more the focus of the movie. It's a really cool idea that they could have saved the world. But instead we're focused on just this guy's obsession with being laid. Which seems like a 80's movie and not a 50's movie. As for the cast, it's a bunch of British people from the 50s I'm not going to have heard of. Uh, a lot of stage play adaptations. This itself was based on a novel. The director we did run into before because I'm always going to have overlap. Terrence Fisher, who did a lot of Hammer Horror movies, including The Gorgon, which I reviewed a couple years ago. Bonus fact about Barbara Payton. She was in a movie called Bride of the Gorilla, where her husband is voodoo-cursed into turning into a gorilla. The only other actress from her hometown of Cloette, Minnesota, is Jessica Lang, who, of course, is best known for King Kong. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, I shall try to do better next time. No bonus clips.